How's it going guys? We have an important question for cardio slash path for step one. If you're studying for step two, I flag this as internal medicine as well. I think the concepts in this vignette are important to reiterate. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 67-year-old woman, two-month history of progressive shortness of breath with exertion. Auscultation of the chest shows an S4 heart sound. Serum calcium 10.6 six milligrams per deciliter, normal range 8.4 8 to 10.2, MCV 108 femtoliters should be 80 to 100. Urine dipstick, one plus protein. Biopsy of myocardium is shown. You say, no idea what I'm fucking looking at. Okay, I'll explain this as we move through the question. Question wants to know which the following is most likely to be seen as patient. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice C, soft P2 heart sound, wrong fucking answer. What you need to know for your simile. Soft P2 could refer to pulmonic stenosis. That's actually not what's important. What is important is a loud P2. Okay, so a loud P2, they can also say loud pulmonic component of S2 or just loud S2. You're never going to have a loud A2 on US simile. If they say loud S2, they're referring to loud P2, which means pulmonary hypertension. Loud P2 means pulmonary hypertension. Now in this patient, clearly we have some heart issue going on. Okay, and <clears throat> if we have shortness of breath with exertion, that tells us we have at least at the minimum a left heart issue more than likely. So that would back up to the right heart in theory, and that could cause pulmonary hypertension with a loud P2. Okay, so you're not going to see a soft S2 here. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, reduce ejection fraction, wrong answer. And the reason you know that's wrong is because we have an S4 heart sound. Okay, that's where I said the internal medicine could overlap, where you need to know an S4, 29 out of 30 questions means diastolic dysfunction, a stiff left ventricle. Occasionally it can be right-sided. Okay, you can have a backup all the way to the right ventricle where you have a right-sided S4. I've seen it on 2CK material. But most of the time, S4 means a stiff left ventricle. It's diastolic dysfunction. And in diastolic dysfunction, the salient characteristic is that we have preserved ejection fraction. Okay, If we had an S3 heart sound, which is systolic dysfunction, then we would have reduced ejection fraction. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, osteoblastic metastases on bone scan. Wrong answer. You know instantly it's wrong because this is very buzzy for prostate cancer, prostatic adenocarcinoma. Okay, Osteoblastic mets. They light up on a bone skin. I mean, that is the salient characteristic of prostate cancer. Pretty much every other cancer is going to be lytic, okay? Some students get pedantic and they say, well, can't like breast be blastic and lytic? Very fucking rare, okay? And overthinking, get questions wrong. Osteoblastic mets, prostate cancer. Wrong fucking answer. Shows B, normal PCWP, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. You know this is wrong because we clearly have a left heart pathology here. Okay, you still say no idea what I'm fucking looking at? Okay, well this is showing us amyloidosis. The diagnosis here is going to be multiple myeloma. Now I didn't give you the buzzy back pain, the one plus protein in the urine, that's your Benz Jones proinuria. Okay, so the pathology of multiple myeloma is you have plasma cells that are secreting immunoglobulins. Multiple myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells, B cells. Plasma cells normally secrete immunoglobulin. That's their function. So they are going to be increasing secretion of IgG, kappa, or lambda. They're immunoglobulin light chains. Immunoglobulins are proteins. So those proteins are going to be flying around the body. They deposit in the kidney, cause renal amyloidosis. It's a nephrotic syndrome. That's what you get in multiple myeloma. They, they show up in the urine. That's your Ben's Jones proteins. Those proteins, those immunoglobulin light chains are going to deposit in the heart. That causes cardiac amyloidosis, okay? And that's a cause of diastolic dysfunction. So that's why we have the S4 heart sound here. And you say, well, I don't get it. Why is there a high MCV? I've seen this for multiple myeloma questions, okay? It's not my fucking opinion. I've literally seen a 108 MCV. It's just general bone marrow deficient production, abnormal production, okay? So you can see high MCV, obviously, in B9, B12 deficiency. You could see it in alcoholism. You could sometimes see it in sideroblastic anemia. Uh, and I've also just seen uh, multiple myeloma, okay? And th it's a long discussion. MGUS as well as smoldering myeloma. You can also get a high MCV. It's not to get fixated on it, but um, 
abnormal serum globulins. Okay, you're going to do a serum protein electrophoresis, SPEP, as the next best step in diagnosis. That will show us the M protein spike, which is going to be your IgG kappa or lambda, as I just fucking said. And then confirmatory would be bone marrow biopsy showing us greater than 10% plasma cells. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.